Amadeus. So we are a... Actually, before I start, has anyone heard of Amadeus before? Yes? Okay, most of you have. So we are a global B2B company uh, dedicated to the travel industry. And the way that I explain uh, to my mum and dad what I do is that when you go into a travel agent or when you search online through Skyscanner, Expedia, or on an airline website, the chances are that there's Amadeus technology behind that. Uh, also, when you check in at the airport through the kiosk or on the mobile phone, the way your bags go through all the way from your departure terminal to your arrival terminal, um, again, chances are that Amadeus' technology is being used. And also at the hotel. When you check in at the hotel, when you order extra towels for your room, the technology that facilitates that, there's a very good chance that Amadeus is powering. So we provide solutions to, on one side, the travel providers, so airlines, hotels, railways, etc. And on the other side, we provide technology to the travel sellers, travel agencies, travel management companies, the meta search players like Kayak, Wego, Momondo, Skyscanner, uh, and, and other companies that, that want the content that we aggregate on, on behalf of the airlines. Um, so there's, globally there are three sort of systems. Um, there's Amadeus, there's, there's, there's Sabre, and there's Travel Talk. So when you go into a travel agency, what, what they are using uh, is one of those three systems. Um, we have other competitors, obviously, in, in airports IT that we provide, uh, IT to airports, and we've got other competitors uh, on the hotel PMS side. Um, so some of our numbers. So first, financial. So we generated almost 5 billion euros in revenue last year. Uh, Increase of 8.5% over 2016, so a very good, very good growth. We have a very healthy EBITDA margin of about 38%, which equates to 1.8 billion in EBITDA uh, for last year. And we're one of the top uh, investors in uh, research and development. So we invest between 15 and 16% every year in R&D. So last year, just under 750 million euros in R&D. So we have 15,000 employees, we operate 197 markets, we have about 8,000 software engineers, mainly in Nice, in the south of France, but also in Bangalore, and Bogota, and in Miami. I think the operational stats are, are actually more interesting. So we, Amadeus generated 43% of all travel agency bookings worldwide. So it's about 600, 630 million bookings. And I call worldwide uh, everything apart from China. So we don't operate in China for a variety of reasons. Um, when it comes to actually passengers boarding, so when, it, when you actually board an aircraft, the aircraft is, the, air, the uh, airline is using a departure control system. And the uh, has a departure control system which we, which we uh, uh, provide to airlines. We have 170 airlines or more that uses our departure control system. So last year we, we helped board 1.7 billion passengers, which is almost one third of all air travel is processed by Amadeus. Um, and we are, we peaked at, at um, earlier, sorry, last year we peaked at 55,000 transactions per second, which is more transactions than Google. If you think of all of the, 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 the travel agency requests that are being made around the world, all of the requests on the Skyscanner and Expedia and other, uh, other online travel agencies and, and airline websites, um, Amadeus generates a lot, of, a lot of transactions. I'm not sure if you can see that clearly. Um, but travel is a, is a high growth industry. Uh, three factors. Uh, and, uh, Increasing global population, increasing emerging middle class from the developing countries, and overall GDP growth. The travel is huge. Um, last year, it generated 7.2 trillion dollars to the global economy, so uh, just under 11 percent of global GDP was from the travel, tourism, and hospitality industry. Uh, one in ten jobs are in travel. Um, last year. Travel technology, travel technology spending by travel uh, travel providers uh, hit 85 billion, uh, and the overall travel and tourism growth is going to outpace uh, the, the global economy. So, Amadeus's growth is uh, is obviously 
due to the opportunity and growth in the travel and tourism, uh, travel and tourism industry. Um, and Amadeus has a, we have an ambition. So as I said at the beginning, we, we provide technology to the different players, to the airlines, airports, travel agencies, etc. We have an ambition to uh, facilitate the entire journey from door to door. Um, and the, the, the growth in travel has, uh, uh, has generated a lot of startup interest, a lot of entrepreneurial interest, a lot of funding that's come in. And the, the technologies that are being used now are opening up other elements of what we call the travel chain. What you see here is what we call the travel journey. So the six stages of the travel journey. It starts at the inspiration stage, at the dreaming stage, when, you, when you're thinking about going somewhere. Then there's the search and book. And this has been the traditional um, focus of Amadeus and other, uh, our traditional GDS competition is on the search and book. But with these new technologies, the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution, so AI, uh, augmented reality, blockchain, uh, IoT, are opening up the other elements of the travel journey to technology innovation. So pre-trip, when you're at the airport, on trip, which is during your trip, and then when you come back and you feed that into social media. And Amadeus's ambition is to remove the friction that we all experience when we travel. Uh, so we have this ambition of uh, facilitating the entire journey from door to door. Um, so, Amadeus, uh, two years ago, Amadeus, or 18 months ago, I should say, um, we brought together our, uh, our separate innovation initiatives. We had internal programs where we had dedicated teams in the business units that were trying to create innovation uh, through proof of concepts and trying them. And then we have external initiatives. Uh, uh, we have a venture fund, we have a startup program called Amadeus Next, and we have other external uh, initiatives. And a year and a half ago, corporate strategy, my team, was given the responsibility to consolidate these different initiatives and to put some governance around how we do innovation. Um, and underlying what we now have as our innovation program are specific themes. Uh, and at the moment, and they will change, they will evolve, we have six themes that we try and focus on. So we have messaging platforms as a theme, we have improved conversion, we have uh, ex what we call extended content, so content that's um, outside of our normal area of expertise, which is air content, so we're going into uh, medium content or destination content, insurance, various what we call the long tail extended content. Um, what else? We have blockchain as a as a theme. Um, we have disruptive models that we're seeing some in China, and uh, I always forget one. Uh, we have uh, operational and performance, a general uh, theme to help our uh, travel providers increase their operational efficiency. So we have specific themes underlying our innovation programs. Um, and uh, as a team, we are, at the moment, the corporate innovation programs are with corporate strategy. And the team that we have here in, uh, in, in Bangkok, uh, we have a team of nine, uh, and we focus, primarily we focus on innovation. We also have traditional corporate strategy initiatives, such as uh, uh, traditional m and activity, uh, looking at our joint venture investments, etc. But essentially we're focused uh, on innovation. Um, so why now? Why not now? Why did we only start looking at this a couple of years ago? Um, why APAC? Why is APAC so important? And why did we get some of this is relevant? So I think from, a, uh, from an ecosystem point of view, a startup ecosystem point of view, there are now five cities in the top 20 that are, that are ranked in the top 20, I should say. Um, the, there's always been startups or entrepreneurial uh, companies around. But what is really needed to help them scale and become awesome companies is the ecosystem around it. It's very mature in Europe, it's very mature in the US, uh, it's mature in some markets in Asia, but in, 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 um, in some of the markets, uh, the ecosystem for specifically for travel technology startups wasn't there, it isn't there. Um, so they, they started gaining importance. From a technology angle, four out of the top 10 uh, countries that have the highest, the fastest uh, internet speeds are in Asia. And from a funding perspective, 
tram technology now, 43% uh, of funding for tram technology is coming to Asia. Yes, it's mainly China and India, uh, but the, uh, we're seeing more of a shift from east to west. What we're seeing through the innovations on travel around the messaging platforms and what we're seeing with disruptive models in China is now being sort of exported to, to the West. Usually it was the other way around. In the past it was going around. And then for Amadeus, when we first started interacting with, uh, with, with engaging with startups, we noticed that there wasn't a specific travel technology vertical uh, like there is for FinTech or EdTech FinTech. Um, and the, the, the few startups that we did see that were focused on travel technology, there, there were two types. There was ones that had come from the industry, so they were very well connected, they knew everything, and they didn't really need any help. But then there were the other ones where they weren't from the industry, they didn't have connections, they didn't fully understand the complexity of travel tourism, travel tourism and hospitality. And there weren't any specific accelerators that were uh, out there to help them at the time. So uh, in 2015, November 2015, we created uh, Amadeus Next. Um, it's neither an accelerator nor an incubator. Rather, it's a community of stakeholders that um, leverages their expertise and their technology to support travel technology startups in Asia Pacific. So we'll see in the next slide who we have in the, in the, uh, in the um, in the community. But at the time, there wasn't anyone that was focusing on a community type of approach where on one side you have startups and on the other side you have the different uh, ecosystem stakeholders that support the startups. So we have today we have uh, 30, 32 startups from across Asia Pacific, so from India. Malaysia, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, uh, China, and Korea. Um, and we have uh, over 70 partners. And these partners provide, with Amadeus, they provide the, the technology and expertise to help these startups grow. So we have um, partners such as, in Thailand, we have the National Innovation Agency. We work closely with them and their initiatives in, uh, around uh, uh, travel and tourism innovation. Um, what else? We have Tune Labs, which is the AirAsia Accelerator. Uh, in Malaysia, we have Magic, uh, which is, uh, I think, the innovation center of Malaysia. Um, we have co-working spaces. We have a lot of VCs, uh, part of the community. And together, we support the, the startups that are emerging in Asia Pacific that are focused on travel technology. So, what are the, uh, I should say, so what Amadeus gets out of this is that I guess in the first, in the first six months we were, we were learning ourselves. Um, and if I look back now over the two and a half years, what Amadeus got out of it, or has got out of it, is that it's managed to change the perception of Amadeus as a brand perception. Um, not, not necessarily just external, but also internally. The internal mindset that uh, we've managed to help foster uh, inside Amadeus is a lot more innovative than it was before. Um, we've also uh, seen that Next is a great business development extension to our business units. So our business units uh, go out and procure business and Next, Amadeus Next is seen as a point of differentiation uh, compared to our competitors. Uh, and then lastly, I would say the uh, Amadeus has got value from positioning ourselves as a, uh, an industry advisor. So having these partners has opened up uh, new contacts, new discussions with the likes of the Thai government to see how we can collaborate on the Eastern Economic Corridor. Uh, we're talking to PKCD in Phuket about uh, mobility of, of travellers coming into the airport, going to the hotels. So it's, uh, it's, it's overall it's changed the, the perception of Amadeus as being a, a typical global distribution system which aren't seen as very limited. What's in it for startups is really one of four things. So they come to us uh, for technology. Amadeus has APIs, we have data, uh, we can look to give them the technology they need to create their concepts, create their minimum viable products. Uh, they also come to us for uh, expertise. We've got 
subject matter experts in all facets of travel, tourism, and hospitality, whether it's a hotel property management system or the airline departure control system or travel agency processes. They can come to us uh, to understand how to maybe uh, tweak their solution or maybe pivot from a, from a business perspective. We have many, many customers. Customers, whether they're airlines, travel agencies, airports, airlines, railways, etc. Uh, and we can uh, introduce the startups to to these uh, to the uh, to, to our customers. And then finally, we have a we have a venture fund. Uh, I have one slide on that at the end. Um, it's a very selective fund, so that's why we have a lot of VC partners in the community. Because if a if a startup wants funding. The chances are that Amadeus will pass on it because we're very selective. Uh, but we can make a referral and an introduction to the VCs that are part of uh, that are part of Amadeus Next. So, as I said, we have thirty-two startups uh, in um, thirty-two startups in the program. Um, they come to us for a variety of variety of reasons, uh, mainly those four that you saw. And they're at different stages. They are relatively early stage, but I've just chosen a, a few of them. I'm not going to go into every single one of them. Um, but one of them is a global Himalayan expedition. So they're based in India. Um, and they uh, so they run tours into uh, walking tours into uh, into Ladakh and the northern reaches of uh, India in the Himalayas. Um, but they have a social element to it because they electrify villages by using solar power. So you go there and you trek for a week, but then you also um, uh, put in the solar panels to electrify the villages that don't have electricity. Um, and we found that the use of the solar panel and the technology that they're doing linked with their um, uh, social enterprise was a good fit for, for MLA's next. Uh, another one is CarePod. Uh, I never knew it was a problem, uh, but apparently um, uh, pets, taking pets on aircrafts or in the holes, is very, very expensive. Um, many of them die, unfortunately, during the, during the travel. So CarePod is fixing the problem by offering a smart travel pod for the pet. Um, it's got a lot of interest from, uh, from the airlines in Asia, surprisingly. Um, uh, and these smart pods are connected, uh, and you can use the in-flight Wi-Fi to connect to the actual uh, pod to see the temperature of the kennel, which is in the hole downstairs. So again, the use of uh, technology, but with a sort of a positive, uh, a positive side too. And then, lastly, is one to go Asia. This is based. This is based in Bangkok, um, and they have. They are a, a multimodal provider, so they're aggregating all of the last mile type of content. The, the trains, the buses. Um, I think they even have the BTS all aggregated together to allow uh, users to um, book that last mile. It's similar to a, uh, a road to Rio, which is a, a, a more popular version, but this is starting to aggregate the content uh, in Thailand. So that one's in next as well. So just a, like an example of uh, some of the startups that we have. We also have very technology-focused uh, technology startups. We have some that are uh, focused on augmented reality in China, some that are more focused on blockchain in Korea, um, but these are the ones that have a more uh, sustainable, uh, positive impact uh, uh, angle. On the other side, we work with partners, as I, as I mentioned, um, and some of the ones we work closely with are MIST, um, where I met uh, Ian earlier this year at their press release. So MIST is, a, is an accelerator specifically for the, the Mekong region, and they provide uh, acceleration support for very sort of artisan type startups uh, in the Mekong region. Uh, so we provide a mentorship, we judge, uh, we present at their conference, uh, and we support their accelerator. Um, we have the uh, Da Nang uh, entre Entrepreneurial um, uh, Service in, um, in Da Nang, in Vietnam. Da Nang is being positioned as a smart city, and Amadeus also has. Uh, a smart city narrative around the solutions that we can provide the governments to uh, uh, to increase and improve the mobility part of a smart city. So we're focusing on that pillar of a smart city. Uh, and then BrainSmart is a um, Filipino-based uh, company that uh, helps the uh, the founders of startups with the 
the right mindset for sustainable growth. So just a, a few of the examples of the startups and the partners that are uh, uh, part of the community of MLS Next. Finally, uh, this is the bench fund, MLS Ventures. So the, the, the purpose of the fund or the objective of the fund is to drive strategic value to MLS. Um, through early stage minority investments. Uh, it's not a typical VC where we place money to, to get great financial returns in, in, when we exit in three years' time. It's really there to drive strategic value. Uh, it's been around for four years. We've only made, uh, I think, 10, 10 transactions. Um, um, they're, they're specific criteria. The criteria are the ones that you can see. Um, so it's not necessarily focused on um, a really profitable company from the beginning. It may be the team that really excites us uh, and we may help them pivot their idea. Uh, but these are some of the ones that are part of the, the venture fund. Um, the last one uh, we, we made a small transaction is, is CrowdVision. CrowdVision use software to, uh, I beg your pardon, well, no, I think I've got this wrong. CrowdVision actually use uh, computer software to manage the passenger flows in airports. Um, I think it, a Voxy and CrowdVision should be the other way around. Uh, a Voxy, it has a geo-popularity engine which um, basically puts a heat map over the map to allow travellers to see where hotels are located in the city. Is it in the nightlife area? Is it in the shopping area? So again, this is very, these are more technology-focused uh, uh, technology companies. So, Amadeus is really committed to um, early stage startups through our innovation programs um, uh, and happy to take any questions that you, that you have. I, I do have two, uh, two videos um, showing some of the innovations that we have uh, either created ourselves or partnered with, with partners. They're only, I think, a minute and a half or a minute I can, I can show them, I think. Let's see. Why shouldn't we shop for our future travel this way? And now the day's company, Navitair, unveils the world's first virtual reality travel search and booking experience. Travelers will be able to select a destination and a date for their flight. Once selected, the traveler will pick the flight and see the aircraft seat map to select a seat. You will also add other services to your booking. Once you have all set for your trip, you can move ahead with the payment. This could change the way travelers will purchase trips, helping airlines and other travel companies become the next generation retailers. In the era of the empowered traveler, Navitair and Amadeus are helping airlines to shape a personalized customer experience at every stage of the journey. So, it's a, maybe a bit too conceptual, it's a, a, a bit too futuristic, but that's potentially where the uh, selling of travel, or the buying of travel, could go through the use of VR. Uh, I've got another video which is more, um, we, we're pitching it, it's actually a product, we, we did it in, in, uh, in collaboration with uh, Peugeot and with Nice Airport, and now we're speaking to a couple of Asian providers as well. Um, it's, uh, it's really highlighting the, 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 the power of sharing data and IoT. Uh, it's, it's called Ambient Services. Our environment is becoming more and more connected. Our homes, our TVs, our cars. What if your environment could take care of you when you're traveling? 
Amadeus Ambient Services is a unique piece of technology that sits between the connected things and Amadeus's systems. Thanks to who you are, where you are, and what makes sense for you, we package on the fly the right service at the right time. Travel now needs to be considered outside travel to provide the best possible experience. We take care of everything, even when things go wrong. Enjoy your travel, we take care of the rest. and beyond, Amadeus Ambient Services removes the friction from your home journey. So an example of trying to remove that friction um, at each step of at each step of the journey. Um, so that's all I have. If you have any questions I'll be happy to take uh, questions on, on Amadeus or on startups, investment. Anything? Yes. Just curious, uh, the first video you show and you use the uh, virtual reality. I think it's fine. Okay. Uh, thank you. Have, you have to give your point. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for the presentation. Just curious about the first video you show, the one you use the VR to do the transaction. So has that been used, utilized in actual transaction? The one that you just not yet. So make the projection. So, so, so we did um, we did that as a proof of concept to show to the industry what could be done. What we've done now is we've taken um, the concept behind that to tour operators. Uh, I think the use of VR is is um, is evident when it, when you're at the inspiration stage of the journey. I'm not so sure I would put on VR goggles to actually to actually make a booking, but I would put on VR goggles to be inspired about which African safari to go on or which diving trip to go on if I was in a, in a tour operator. So that's what we're aiming the, the, the VR, the mixed reality, because we also have an augmented reality version of uh, uh, a solution for travel agencies where the travellers in the shop can see what the safari would actually look like. But right now, it's, uh, it, it's too early. Any other questions? My question is, you said that some of the startup models are moving from Asia to, to the West as opposed to the West to Asia. Do you have any case studies or examples of this happening? Uh, I think the most, uh, the most evident is what's happening on the messaging platforms uh, in China with WeChat, with their mini programs, even what's happening online. So we developed um, the first travel uh, Bot, chat bot on the line platform here in Thailand where we released it uh, in the Q4 of last year. Um, Facebook have them, but Facebook Messenger has them. Um, but what you can do with Line, with WeChat, with Kakao uh, is a lot more mature than what you can do with, uh, with uh, Facebook Messenger and we haven't really seen much coming from WhatsApp. So I would say that's one example. Another example is the, the different type of business models that are coming out of China. So China's an interesting market, it's a huge market, it's driving the real growth in, in Asia when it comes to travel. Um, travel Sky are the company that uh, travel agencies and airlines have to use in, in China. Um, and there's some uh, interesting models that the, the uh, online travel agencies are looking at where we, where, where we can help with uh, meta search models or assisted booking models where um, you as the consumer, if you're on a website, you don't want to be just referred to another website, which is the meta search model. These are, what we're seeing is a more of an assisted booking. So you're on a meta search, but you stay within the same user experience as the, as the meta search, but you're actually making the booking on the provider website. So um, I'd say those two are the most, most tangible ones. Any other questions? Amadeus in general, or? Imagine you're not in China. Can you, can you elaborate? 
you mentioned that you're Amadeus, you don't operate in China. Can you elaborate on that? And, and the, the initiatives with all the startups, investment in startups, etc. Is that going to give you sort of a, a, an entry into, into China? So I should. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Okay. Um, I, I, I should, uh, I should actually correct myself. So we are, we are in China. We have an office in Beijing, Shanghai. Our traditional GDS business model, where we aggregate the airline content, we, we give a solution, we sell a solution to travel agencies, uh, and they issue tickets through IATA, which is the, the clearinghouse. We don't operate that model in China. Um, we have customers in China that use our, use our solutions. We have Amadeus Next in, uh, in China. We go back there next month uh, to Beijing to actually do the launch. We've done the launch in Shanghai. Um, so I should, I should have prepped said we are in China. So it's a very strategic market, uh, strategic market for us. Any, any other questions? So we don't, so, so we do co-create on innovation, um, but we usually co-create innovation with a mature company. We may use a startup that has a minimum viable product already, but it, it hasn't scaled, but they have something. We can you take that and then we've made, for instance, Lime, thinking of what we did with Lime. So we use um, a startup in India called Go Hero that had AI uh, or an NLP travel stack, and we use that and we created a chatbot on the line messaging platform collaborative from um, What we do with startups, we help them with their lean canvas, so we help them really understand what problem they're trying to solve, articulate what problem they're trying to solve. Um, uh, we, we have themes, so if they are uh, creating a solution in one of those themes, it does interest us. Uh, we don't go into the um, we wouldn't, we wouldn't start a startup up to create a product. Um, I don't know if that answers your, your question. Or not. So, perhaps you have like a unusual product that you have something that you have created and you have a list of startups and, and like, what they are working on and have sure. they, like, do, is it public access? Yes, okay. yes so we have a, on the Amadeus Next, Next website. We have the list of all of the, the startups and all of the partners that we work with and, and what they're doing. Um, out of the 32, I, I think 15 of them are in India and they are, uh, some of them are focusing on IT planning solutions. Uh, one of them I think is AR, uh, one of them is a car, uh, car sharing company that has a lot of data already that can be used to, for the government. Um, but we have, we have all of that. And then we also have um, the other programs that we have where we also work with startups, for instance, the, the uh, venture fund. So we have uh, those startups as well. Um, so we can, we can all, all of the information is public. Any more questions on Amadeus or trends? Or Yeah, so we have about 15 minutes left. Is there any one last question is, um, you mentioned blockchain was something that was one of the pillars that you're looking at. How is blockchain used in travel technology? Uh, today, I would say um, it's it's at the exploratory phase. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work. I think in general, there's a lot of hype on blockchain. I think there are some fundamental challenges around blockchain as a trust issue. Mm -hmm. People don't understand it because it's not very well articulated. Um, specifically in travel, there are many applications where blockchain could be used to solve a problem. Um, we are seeing um, industry leaders or travel players uh, trying blockchain. We've got British Airways and Heathrow Airport uh, trying blockchain for flight data. Uh, Cathay Pacific um, migrated part of I think they migrated part of their Asian Miles loyalty program to blockchain. Singapore Airlines now that they're doing the same later this year. 
uh, Chris Fly will become a digital wallet where you can instantly accrue your miles as soon as the flight is finished and then redeem them through a network of vendors. Um, we're working with a startup from the US called Civic uh, that uses blockchain for identity verification. Not to say that your identity is on the blockchain, but they use the blockchain to, to verify your identity. And the use case there is through airports, uh, or it could be when you check into a hotel. Um, there's a lot of, a lot, yeah, every conference, every travel industry conference, there, is a, there, is a, there are panels or presentations on blockchain. At the end of the day, um, there's, there's a lot of friction and a lot of middlemen within the travel ecosystem, and that's what blockchain can do. It can replace the middleman and can reduce some of that for automatic processing. In every case, it may not be applicable, uh, but in many cases, there, there, there is a way to use for it. I think, um, I think it's the Dubai government partnered with a uh, startup called Object Tech in the UK. And they are using, uh, they're combining biometric verification and the blockchain to digitize your passport. And they've done a trial earlier this year uh, where a person was able to come off a plane, walk through the airport without showing their passport. So Dubai, Dubai will be probably the first to, uh, you'll start to see this um, more in Dubai uh, in terms of the seamless walking through the airport with, the, uh, with no passport. Uh, so right now, probably too early, uh, I think we're in this exploration phase. As we go through 2018 and, and into 2019, we'll see specific uh, use cases of blockchain and travel. Um, Amadeus has we've created two proof of concepts. They are just proof of concepts around loyalty. And we are, we've also created a, a, an MVP using the Ethereum blockchain uh, for the tracking of bags. Uh, it's called bag chain. Um, lost bags cost the industry billions. Uh, and using the blockchain you could a lot more effectively track a lost bag. So I think we'll see more, definitely see more different blockchain. Yeah. Another question? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I'm curious the, uh, the Amadeus group itself, the, uh, it's very de developing and uh, you have a very high pro profit ratio. Uh, the, what is the present major source of the, the profit strengths? The infrastructure of the, the software. So we have two main lines of business. We have a line of business called Travel Channels, which was the travel seller part of our model. So the solutions that we sell to travel agencies, uh, meta search companies, online travel agencies. That line of business, travel channels, generates 65% of our revenue. The other side of our business is the what we call the IT business, and it's effectively airline IT. So we provide what we call passenger service systems. So the reservation modules, inventory modules, departure control to airlines, like Japan Airlines, um, we also provide IT solutions to airports. Uh, in Thailand and other countries use our operational database. The common use equipment you see when the chuck star will check you in. The software is provided by us and that generates the 35%. Um, our other businesses, hospitality IT, rail IT, we are in the incubation stage at the moment, so we don't have separate uh, PLs for those businesses. But it's essentially um, the, the, the growth in Amadeus has been in our travel channels business. Then, in about uh, 15 years ago, we, we diversified into airline IT, and now we're looking to diversify into new areas. That's why we've acquired hospitality companies, airport IT companies, to continue our, our growth. As you say, we have a very, we have a very, we're very lucky, we have a very healthy um, uh, in our margin. Who will afford the major competitors of for our models for the travel channel? Travel channels would be um, globally, Sabre and Travel Port. Um, in Japan, there are two local CRSs called Access and Infinity, owned by JAL and all Nippon respectively. It's a very unique market, Japan. Um, uh, but from our travel channels business, we really have the global competitors would be Travelport and, and Sector. Uh, and they offer very similar 
of solutions to us. And then on the airline side, you have uh, we have competitors like HP, Unisys, Sabre also has a, um, a PSS, a passenger service system. And then if you go further like on the hospitality side, you've got uh, Oracle as a as a uh, as a big competitor. So the more we extend along the travel chain, the more competitors we have. Uh, and obviously now we have uh, the rise of the, the, the B2C gatekeepers, so the Googles, the Facebooks, uh, the Amazons, and the China, Alibaba. The question is, what, what could they do in, in travel? They have a lot of they have a lot of data. They have a lot of consumers. Yeah. So the, it's the kind of retention for the startup uh, people or travel related. The, just I want to know the. Uh, the percentage of the contribution for the real turnover by generating from this group of stuff. Yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not really the purpose of why we are working with startups. We, I would say that Amadeus Next is really focused on uh, maybe Horizon 2, Horizon 3, so three to seven years in the future. Um, we have different themes, so one of the themes of Next is sustainability. That's why we like the startups that have uh, a positive impact or more, a more of a social entrepreneurship than, than a real tech company. Um, but right now, those, those startups, we are, it's, it's too early to say. Maybe one of them will, will become our next hockey stick and we will, it will generate our revenue in, uh, in years to come. I think smart cities and the technology around smart cities, the sharing of data, IoT, that, could, look, that is going to be something that's only going to grow and grow. Um, but there's no real product per se for, for smart cities, but it's something that we would like to explore. Thank you.